Okay, if you um, read the chat room, you'll see some quote from this book on my table. Uh, I recommend that uh, everybody, um, you know, you can get from a library or get, get a hold of it and uh, just um, use it as a complimentary reading um, to my my uh, class on classical Chinese landscape painting. Um, okay, you can also get a very good price on Amazon. Uh, with this. I bought the second hand uh, used book. Yeah, so the Chinese landscape painting um, was developed in the time of uh, um, this union of the fourth and the fifth century, when China was uh, uh, falling, uh, the Han Empire was falling apart. Uh, intellectuals uh, start to retreat to mountains um, and become poet and uh, artist. Um, in Tang Dynasty, um, with influence of Taoism and, and uh, uh, Buddhism, the art uh, be, has become more uh, for the sake of art. So um, I have this quote in the chess room, if you read that uh, from Wang Wei, he is a famous uh, Tang poet. He wrote uh, the importance of, of Chinese brush painting. He said, um, to look at the autumn clouds makes, me, uh, makes my soul soar like a bird preparing the paper on my table to exert oneself with the strange mountains and the rivers with green forests and the soaring wind with the foaming waters and the rushing cascades. How wonderful. It needs only the turn of hand to bring down the brightness of the spirit into the picture. Such is the joy of painting. So the Chinese um, uh, landscape painting, the earliest example we have is uh, from seventh century, the Sui Dynasty. But the literature about uh, the uh, form of art, uh, this art could be traced back to um, in like a 500, uh, like in the yeah, in the fifth century or uh, earlier, so the um, the rules are set by those uh, who critique about it, who write about it, um, and later it become the uh, if we want to learn this form of art, you have to uh, follow those uh, rules. Um, but uh, the rules by no means uh, bind you as artist uh, from creating your own personal or individual style when you're ready to, um, to form your own style. So uh, it's just a, a study a help guide. Um, but you have to learn the, the rule of the game of, it, of this uh, ink painting. Um, in the First class, we talked about the uh, how to paint ro rocks, um, the three dimensions, or three faces of a uh, rock. And today, we're going to learn um, the trees. Um, but before that, uh, let me uh, ask you if I have a painting um, to paint uh, with a, a house. Um, rocks and the trees. But what would you do first? Have you ever think about this? You know, if you make a copy, it doesn't matter. But if you start to compose a picture, you need to consider which comes first, which comes later. Uh, you know, when, when you uh, on the painting order, like the composition uh, has a certain order in Chinese um, brush painting. Usually, the tree comes first. Usually, you know, the tree is in the, in the foreground that comes first. And then we proceed to the rocks 
under the tree and uh, uh, other land elements uh, could be behind the trees. Um, and then the, um, what else? The river, but we don't do the river ripples until we, we have done the boat. The houses, if it's in the front of the trees, we'll give it uh, a space. We'll save that, we'll leave a space for it. But it will be added after the trees are done. Of course, you know, you, you, you can uh, break this rule, but the, uh, we try to um, make the, the big picture first. So if you go into detail like a figure first, um, and sometimes well, I didn't do that the last time I, I remembered I did the uh, Zen painting copy uh, with figures first. But um, I think the original, as you can imagine, the, the climber, the, the hiking person will be done after the slope, uh, the uh, mountain, the hill was done, right? So there's an order, if you read the um, chat room, so trees, then the tree trunk and the branches, then the foliage. After that, rocks and other land, dwellings or houses, figures, birds and the animals, if any, then the boat and the water. The final uh, stage is the distant hills and mountains. So um, those usually are not outlined, the remote mountains. Okay. Now, let's talk about uh, uh, how to do the trees. I'm going to use uh, size the paper today. Uh, it comes uh, with uh, uh, large sheets or medium sheets. This is a medium. I already cut in half. Now I cut into uh, quarters of the medium sheet. You uh, you don't have to cut if you you can use any paper at this time to uh, paint along with me. Um, just the practice before we do complete painting, okay? <clears throat> if you look at the, this uh, page one on um, the master to see the garden menu of painting, uh, by page one, I mean the illustration. I don't know what which page it would be, but uh, um, the starting of the illustr with illustrations uh, after the introduction part. Uh, you'll see the, the tree. Okay, I, I will use the, the liner, uh, the mixture liner, or I, I do have a new brush I like to test. I, I did a test the other day on YouTube, if any of you have seen that. Uh, this is called the, the Mustard brush. I just got it special order for the, this class. Um, remember we have the uh, me dot, that's a very soft for horizontal dot. This one is good for rounded dots and uh, also for other functionalities of uh, landscape painting. So I'm going to draw the tree trunk with the idea of uh, um, three, uh, not three, four directions, right? Tree has four directions. Okay. One on the left. Now I'm going to do a branch towards the right, but um, pay attention to this uh, uh, this stroke. That is 
in the front of the contour, the, the, the right contour, right? So I can repeat that. And the, the uh, twigs could be done in one stroke. One, one stroke, okay. So this is a, the, um, a little nuance that you need to pay attention. So um, you need to avoid all the branches just on left and the right, you know, and uh, um, without overlapping. So that, that's uh, also avoid this uh, fork. Like a fork. So it, the word, if you read the introduction on this uh, page uh, from the master, they talk about the four directions of uh, like an intersection or, or a road, uh, branches uh, uh, look you know, like a path of a road. Uh, so you need to follow this idea. Not uh, necessarily all of them, but then this one's on the left. So that's another direction. This is a little, you could do another one um, in the back. Let me do another uh, detail here. So with a, uh, let's say this is in the front, right? And you can add a, a branch right from the, that. That would be behind. So four directions meaning. Don't take it too um, literal, but um, it's just that the idea of uh, um, doing it. Uh, uh, so if I, you know, make more bad examples, if you know, if you if you don't do this, uh, it will be. You know something like that. So that 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 would be the things we need to avoid. And this is this is okay. This is okay. All right. And uh, we also have this uh, secret character. Jie. It, it's the same uh, character. If you if we add the. Um, the uh, grass radical on top, it, it's uh, the mustard. And this uh, it doesn't matter what that original meaning, it could be. Uh, uh, we, we use this character to uh, suggest the branches, upward branches. Actually, this, this uh, character is it's written more like a downward. Um, you know, could be like this. Actually, sometimes it could be read as a penny, a fen, a chi. So just suggest that it's uh, three or four strokes. You know, just like that or uh, that's also a indicate you can build on that for uh, you know for this is called uh, the deer horn or um, stack horn branch. That's for the upward branches. Downward branches is called the, the uh, crab, 
crop claw. You can make uh, uh, two or three in one direction, and then uh, the other direction. Usually it's three and uh, plus one. And curve, no, no, not straight. That's uh, different. And then you can add extra ones to, to balance it. This is a little harder, need more uh, practice. This is called the xie zhua, xie zhua, xie. Um, I forgot how to write it. I think it's a fish, uh, not a, not a one. <laughs> okay. okay. And the. Uh, we also have the Lu uh, Zi uh, crossing. Yesterday, day before yesterday, Victoria talked about this in her calligraphy class. And uh, on this page, you can find an example of this. This Lu Zi, uh, a woman character crossing branches. So instead of like the, the deer horn or stack horn, uh, you can make a, uh, a crossing branch like, a, like this. You make the front one first and then uh, Is the uh, branch crossing behind the main branch? We call this uh, soft cross, not, not uh, cross on top of this, behind, crossing behind. And you can make another one. So this, this one is in the front this time. So do the front one first. Okay, the front. First, and then uh, the one behind. The rest is the, the same idea, like the, the uh, this uh, horn branch to the, for the twigs. You can also draw from uh, uh, outside in for twigs, yeah. and vary the length of uh, the uh, sections and angles. And you know, like after some practice, uh, it should become your second nature to draw this uh, kind of, this is very difficult, uh, the bear tree. Um, today we're not going to learn bear trees. So, uh, we just concentrate on the uh, trunk and the, uh, the four branches. Uh, when we do the autumn foliage trees, okay. Any questions so far? Uh, yes, I would like to ask you a question about the brush that you're using. You said you explained in YouTube. Can you say a bit more about uh, it? Uh, I have this brush called the BHA Mustards. BHA hmm. Mustards brush. It's mustard? Uh-huh. I, I don't understand the word. Master or mustard? M-O. Sorry. Must I'm, I'm, Moss, our oh, moss. Moss dots, okay. Yeah, moss dot brush. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, just, but you can use it for other purposes. This, this one is, uh, uh, I asked the brush maker to bury the uh, bristle deep in the handle. Mm -hmm. so it, it, it's short, but uh, it contains um, same uh, moisture. Um, okay. It it's very um, full, 
uh, not so pointed like the liner. So you, you can draw mm. rock contour uh, and branches. And also we're going to do the foliage uh, okay. as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's designed for landscape painting, classical landscape painting, not, not, not a split brush. But uh, yeah. it, it comes with a, like this rounded, rounded. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's a little bit uh, door, you know, then you don't have to mourn the new one mm -hmm. to wear the new one, you know, to wait for the new one to worn. So this comes a little around it. So that's the branches. And uh, we talked about the shears or the claw and downward and upward. And you can find examples in mm -hmm. the book. Okay. And then uh, we're going to, uh, yeah, there's a page about uh, the tree root. Uh, we already talked about in pine. Most of you uh, get that, right? Uh, you can study this page for, for tree root. Um, don't paint it too large like that, unless it's a host tree, okay? The host and the guest, you know, the main tree. Um, uh, let me see. The next we're going to talk about outlined, outlined leaves. Before we, we paint painting today, we need to learn this elements first. So the autumn leaves would be outlined and then colored. Uh, there are three basic shapes. Um, and uh, about 12 uh, variations uh, of styles, types, or outlines. Okay. The first one, the most difficult one I'm going to talk about is this Jie uh, uh, Zidian, the same, same character, Jie. Jie Zidian three or four or five also. That's, that reads jie, like a jie zian, the mustard, which means mustard, um, with, with or without uh, uh, the radical, doesn't matter. I mean, we, we don't use the four sparing, <laughs> the four character, but uh, this is the same character, uh, ancient character for mustard. Okay. I'm going to count the strokes and then give you directions um, inward and uh, uh, outward. Follow me, please. Stroke, maybe uh, two, two strokes a group, uh, a, uh, how do you say? Because we call this jia ye. Jia means double, double stroke leaf. That means, you know, instead of dian ye, Dian means a dot or single stroke. Jia uh, means outlined, but you can see what I, that, what I mean. So one, that counts one leaf, but two strokes, double strokes, okay, double stroke leaf. leaf. Then I, I change direction. So this, this beginning is inward, then I go, downward or outward without, you know, moving my hand. If you keep going one direction, you have to change your brush uh, direction, right? So instead of doing that, this is the same kind of, uh, uh, same kind of uh, stroke like you paint chrysanthemum, you know. So th this is a, um, oh, I should give you, uh, oh, okay, I just keep doing this. So all the, all this three goes inside out. Okay, and don't do this. Let me just draw lazy loops like that. You can do it in one stroke, right? You, you know, some, some artists, some contemporary even, uh, 
contemporary uh, art student may do this, but this is this is wrong. And uh, if you do one by one, something is wrong, right? The correct way is this. The correct way is this. Keep this in mind. So there's a center, and with a little void, um, a half circle kind of center with a, um, an imaginative center and radiate um, from that four strokes. Okay. So this first one goes in, second and the third and fourth goes out. So one, two, three, four. This is the, the rule. And you can, I, I'm not, I'm sure everybody's uh, signature style it will be different, but this is what I do. Um, notice also the, you know, what's wrong with these are there's no stop, no uh, beginning and ending. So there's a stop, a pause in the beginning, and then stop. Not complete the, the uh, not like. Uh, oval like this is wrong correct is one two it could be leaner could be fatter or um, fuller but uh, you can leave you need to, uh, to leave the um, end open a little bit let the spirits to travel I always say that um, if you if you feel comfortable, you the second one could go in. You know you don't have to force yourself anything, just like that. The reason we go down is that it's this. So when when you paint uh, in direct um, dotting approach, it will be like you know like like this. So um, without a stop. So that's why we 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 go this way and then um, go down without lifting the brush, right? That's when you paint fast, it's more convenient. So avoid and uh, starting or ending all the leaves in, in the center to so make it a dead center that to leave a little space. Don't have to be perfect like this half circle thing, but just leave it open. So that's one group. If you are okay with this group, then we start to make a pattern. Um, to make a pattern, rule of thumb is do not overlap. So no, no, no overlapping. And uh, um, even, <laughs> this don't, but do make it even and equals uh, size. Just the key is even. So let me, let me make a group to show you. I'm going to do it fast. Do you see the trick of this? I borrowed the first one from the first group. Now I'm painting the third group without doing the, the uh, uh, leaflet number one. So I just go to number three and then number four, two, three, four. So you can omit number one. You can omit number one. Um, I made the, some leaves too big. I need to pay attention on that. And the same thickness of the stroke. Right? This needs lots of practice. I, I've been doing this 
recently let me show you this is how i practice i started see this is a, this is what i <laughs> in my practice papers you should blacken the whole paper and then you will you will get it right so this is rule number one so this is too big this is too big rule number two uh, you can start uh, either under number two or number three. You, not exactly uh, uh, under the previous rule. So I get, uh, I tend to get too small. You need to keep the same size. This is like a um, fabric design, <laughs> pattern design you have to keep the same motif uh, relatively same. Okay. And occasionally you can add uh, a, uh, a few, you know, strokes to fill in the blank or something like that. But try to, to make the pattern even. Hard, huh? This is harder than the other shapes, um, but this is a good time to practice this with me. Okay, so numbers, uh, row number three, try to make it the same size. Okay. Try to keep the same size, not sm getting smaller. So we don't really worry about uh, pictographic uh, resemblance of uh, uh, reality. We don't worry about what, what tree, what kind of tree it is. Um, it's, it's more like a, 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 a pattern design but not exactly uh, look like a patternized. You know, this, this is a little bit, uh, uh, maybe I should borrow some of the branches to make it, uh, I see some space in between, that's not good, but we can add half leaf or something just to make it even. But that's a cheat, try not to do that. Okay, let's see. Yeah, on, on the book, I see there are many, uh, not exactly, we, we don't consider that overlapping, but uh, um, borrowing, sharing, sharing, yeah. Shared, this, you can share this with this. If the more you share, the denser you get. Right, so and also you can you can void. I think when you when you try to overlap by overlapping, I mean heart. And this, I should do that. The bad example would be if you overlap. I mean you overlap. That that means like this. You mess up. Basically, this is what we should avoid. It's okay to do, um, to, to void. I consider that a, a, a borrowed, a shared, but it, it could be overlapped, you know, it's hidden behind, I just omitted that. So you can just do two, three, and then there's one uh, you cannot see. So that, that's the trick to make it uh, uh, equal, uh, even space, right? And you can just do half, stacking them together. So just don't overlap like that. However, if you, if you paint in distant uh, uh, trees, you know, like middle or far ground, you can do this, right? I mentioned, uh, so you can make it, uh, 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 
here. So one, two, three, four. That's a, a direct dotting, right? One, two, three, four. And then we can, instead of the second group goes to the right, we you can you can overlap it. So let's just do overlapping. One, two, three, four. And then another one overlapping. It's almost like the pine tree needle, you know, same idea. You overlap about uh, a little bit like that. So one, two, yeah. So this, this is okay. This is not okay. If you outline it, it should uh, not make a hard overlapping. You can avoid, you can, um, you can make it uh, Denser by overlapping uh, the leaves without a. I don't know how to describe this too. This is hard. I call this hard. This is soft. Uh, this like voids. Uh, the front and back. The the back is hidden behind the 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 front. So you do the front first and then add the one behind. Okay. So keep keep it even and equal size. I should put that. Not getting, uh, not mix. Uh, also, you know, the number of uh, leaflets in in uh, one group, even though you, you may have some hidden ones, incomplete ones, but uh, uh, they should be in the same number, equal and same number. So if you do three, you can make a pattern with three, leaflets are four or five, but once you decide on, on which number, you need to stay with it. Don't mix different patterns in, in one picture, uh, on one tree. Now we try to um, apply it to, to a tree. At this point, I, I don't worry about the ink tonality, but just the idea. So when you draw a tree, you need to make a kind of design, you know, like a template, uh, roughly the, the shape of the, um, the leaf. This can come, uh, when you make a design, it doesn't matter, but when you do it, uh, you should do the trunk first. But uh, in the design, you need to save space Otherwise, all the trunk would be in the front of the leaf, right? So if you, if you have some um, leaves in the front of the branches, and then you need to match this, continue, keep the continuity, um, and don't lose that so if you okay let, let's make it a, a bad example so you have uh, uh, leaves in front of this one and then uh, suddenly it goes to 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 left and then so you know you may have just lose the continuity, that's not, not good. You have to match it. Okay, just don't lose the continuity with the trunk and the branches. Um, when you make a pattern, you need to uh, start from the top. So you start from the top and then go, you know, row by row, something like that, all, all the way to the to the bottom. And vary the outer shape of the the uh, uh, ball. Okay. So I will draw these guidelines, maybe, you know, just uh, like three rows. 
to indicate the, the, the direction. Uh, this is this in this pattern the the uh, motif arranged uh, horizontally, um, but in most cases, you know, the other shapes uh, should avoid vertical or horizontal. For example, the triangular shape. Uh, last time I did the triangle uh, with the point pointing up, so uh, the maple tree actually look more uh, like a down. So this is the stroke. Let me make a big one so you can see. See the calligraphy, okay, not just the... Make a check mark and then a little dash. Um, that's, that's a single leaf in, in maple or um, plant tree, plant tree uh, leaf, like a sycamore, that kind of. Um, so when you make a, a pattern, You should keep all the units the same, first of all. Uh, this, this one goes down. As I mentioned, it should, should be avoided. It should go diagonally, OK? And you, you can keep the triangle leveled, I think. I didn't check, but uh, my feeling is that maybe it does not matter, but I would Let's see if I can notice. Hmm. Okay. I think relatively leveled is, is good. So you can make uh, columns like this to fill in uh, a space. So just do columns of uh, triangles. This is an easy one. Okay. Um, and then you don't have to close the gap. You can leave a little opening. You don't have to it's okay, you know, some of them is complete, but it's nicer just to, to do it with some, um, to show a, a, a carefree gesture, you know, it's not so um, gong bi kind of refined, you know, if you, this is a, actually it's a gong bi technique. Gong bi means a refined um, fine line, fine line, yeah, detailed. But it should show some uh, spontaneous, spontaneous uh, carefulness, or um, gombi, you know, spontaneous gombi. Yeah, that's the word. Okay, and uh, the third type is the uh, round shape. The round shape. Um, for aspens, I would suggest you do it in two strokes, just like you circle a petal of a plum in the beginning. You cannot do it uh, like that. You know, after a while, you can you can try you know to do it in one stroke. I usually do it. Uh, um, like this in in cross white, cross cross claw, cr crosswise, right? Cl clockwise, anti-clockwise or clockwise, clockwise, yeah, clockwise. I have difficulty to pronounce the L and uh, R. Okay, when you make a pattern of this. Um, think about a, a, a flower with uh, six petals. So uh, do the center one, 
uh, the first one. We start and then develop um, upward. So put one on top, put one on upper left, upper lower left, down, and then the right. And then you can add just uh, uh, three to to this selected uh, uh, new uh, center. So I don't have to start uh, with the six again. I just I just add three, and, and I, I consider the existing four is already there. So I just consider. So always keep a uh, keep in mind where you are centered, and then you add three. It's easy. Something like that. You understand? If I if I dot the distant ones with this, it will be like this with this magic uh, brush I just got. If you cannot do this, <laughs> your brush is not right. I'm kidding. You can do this. Just, just draw a little circle, all right? But you're not supposed to draw a circle in, in, in Chinese painting, believe me. So uh, this is seven. I think I got it wrong. Anyway, doesn't matter. The rule is not seven or six. The rule is not to overlap. Same as uh, same as this one. No overlapping. Keep it even. The space between the neighboring dots should be even, and the size of the dots equal. So it doesn't matter what pattern is it, you know, just, um, you know, you don't have to be uh, so rigid to your rules, you know, but when you deviate too far, you, the rule will guide you back, will, will give you a solution. So you don't, you don't, uh, so the tree would not look like, a, like this. It's patternized flower flower um, pattern. I think it should come to the six still like this idea. Let me do a six standard here so you can you can keep practicing this. There's no space between the leaflet, the round leaflet. We have this uh, kind of tree we call ginkgo. Uh, is that ginkgo or ginkgo? Ginkgo, right? Ginkgo. Is it Japanese or Chinese pronunciation? Yingxing, Chinese name. Um, and uh, most commonly, the aspen tree. Okay, speaking of the real trees corresponding to this, they're not um, specific. Gener they're more Typical, 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 uh, instead of uh, special, specific um, trees. Uh, but uh, um, you're strongly encouraged to go out and uh, observe in um, your backyard or park to see, um, you know, to find those patterns in real life. Here, here I did some picture yesterday in my backyard and the front yard. Uh, let's see, do you see this? Okay, here we go. Uh, this, uh, I don't know what this tree is. Holly, holly tree, yeah. Okay, so you can, I zoom in. This is uh, which type? The round, the, uh, um, let's just name it holly tree dots, or you know, you can call it uh, the, you know the four leaflets um, we learned first. It will belong to this, All right? Um, yeah, definitely this one. This is a fig tree, so you can do um, four or five, uh, five instead of. Uh, um, four, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
three, four, five. Oh, even six. No problem. Oh. I'm sorry, I just draw this uh, uh, five instead of uh, um, instead of four, you can draw five. I keep messing up. Okay. This print is very important. More practice will make it look natural. Okay, um, thick. All right, and this is uh, called the uh, osmanthus. It's a fragrant uh, flowering uh, tree. I think it belongs to this group of uh, four leaflet outlined. You see the fours, right? And this is a kind of a fragrant flower called Mi Lan. I don't know what's the rice uh, orchid. It's not orchid, but we, the smell is the same as orchid. We call it tree orchid, maybe Mi Lan. It's, it's... Can you see it? Yes. OK. What's the name of this flower? You know? I think it's called mock orange. A macaron orange, yeah. Mock, it's, it's, uh, it has the fragrance of an, the flowers smell like orange blossom, but uh -huh. it doesn't produce fruit. You know. I think that's what it is. I had yeah, some. It's a very tiny flower, very tiny, mm -hmm. very little, yeah. We call it a rice flower, <laughs> rice orchid. It's like a little rice size, yeah. Very fragrant. Thank you. And uh, this is a mango tree. I, mm. I think it's the same kind of, you know, you can just make the leaf look uh, longer uh, to make a mango tree. So same kind of idea, you can just uh, make it uh, maybe mm -hmm. longer, larger could be something like that. And more, uh, you can create your own pattern afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a gardenia, gardenia. Oh, no, not gardenia. It's a rong shu. I don't know how to say this. Nice. Rong shu. Uh, it's know. a Chi South, South China uh, kind of plant. Uh, I, oh, yeah. I think it's very common here in California. They, they grow very fast with this giant tree system and the root system. Uh, Hawaii, maybe something like this. Very. This is a lychee plant. Mm. <laughs> yeah, very typical for leaflet, right? Pattern. But you, you know, you don't be um, too restrictive to count the real plant. It's important to remember the vocabulary we learned in our books, apply it to when you see a real plant. Oh, I have seen this in books, so it's easy, just for, uh, so you don't have to uh, paint what you see. You know what I mean? Patternize it, yeah. And this is the mango. Okay. Mango, wow. Okay, so um, that's it about uh, the uh, uh, the foliage. Uh, each of them usually have a corresponding uh, distance, uh, uh, kind of. You know, you can dot the triangular ones and just the. Uh, uh, like that in distance you, you don't have to uh, you don't have to uh, draw the, the uh, contours and then uh, I think there's another one let me just larger actually uh, the same size as this but uh, this is representing the uh, distance uh, maple you know you draw a line you draw a horizontal line and then three four uh, kind of uh, uh, triangular shape under that. That's uh, a, a um, abbreviation of the one by one. Um, so this could be foreground, middle ground, and far ground. You understand? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to show you the work we're going to do next.
in the handout you received in email, there are two options. Uh, I'm going to go with the one I did uh, some research um, and I have a, a template, John. You can, you can use this. I'm not sure if you can print the same size as the original. Um, you can maybe yeah, use a, you have to use a multiple page if that, uh, you know, um, you can, you can paint it in rectangular uh, format without to uh, worry about the, uh, the frame shape. Okay. And here's the, the painting, high quality print, original size. Let me show you. Let me take it out from the uh, plastic so you can see. This was, a, I scanned it last night, so it's probably clear, more clear to uh, see the, the scanned copy than this one, but let me just show you some details. So these leaves are done uh, one by one, like we, we did. Don't be um, scared by this. We can finish this before the class. Oh, we only have half an hour. I have to hurry. Um, Henry isn't supposed to be till 12.30. Oh, 12.30, oh, sorry. I confused we with, uh, sorry, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I confused with uh, Victoria's uh, time. She started at nine, I said at 9.30, yeah. So we have one hour. Good, we're good. Thank you, Susan. Okay. I. Original copy is on the scanner still. Let me take it out. Um, I use the size the paper. If you use this uh, Chicada wing, it was it, it's okay. Any you know um, size paper is much. This one is pretty transparent. I don't need to the. The box, I, I do have a box nearby, but uh, I don't need that. It's not necessary to have the detail because this one I, I draw on with a marker. I, I think I can draw the, 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 the border with marker pin. It's faster, I think. Instead of using the brush, Maybe you can find some kind of a curved ruler to draw this kind of curve. Let's see. Oh, this is the wrong end. Emily, did, what did you do with the, the border? Is Emily there? Yes, yes. I, um, I cut out a, the, a rectangle and a kind of heavy card stock. And then I just took my brush. I placed it on the paper and then I took my brush and half on the board and half on the paper just mm. drew the line. So you have a template with a yeah, I made a template. Mat. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you should get a template. So once for all, you will have the template, and then you it can works. choose it to just draw. A, yeah, okay, that would be much smoother than this. 
Thank you, Emily. I I I learned it from you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with us. So um, you can use pencil to to um, kind of uh, uh, tra trace uh, the placement of the trees. Um, since this is an unsized paper, I'm not going to destroy the template. Uh, I just draw directly on top of it. Okay. So let me just use my uh, new brush. Uh, I should have the original in front of me. So I'm going to put the original. Do you want to see this uh, template on my left corner or the original? Uh, okay. Oh, this one, I, I, after sending you the handout, I erased the inscription, which is uh, added by the emperor, you know, with the, his seal still on the corner. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, one of the, the Song, Southern Song Dynasty emperor wrote the inscription. It's too big, it ruined the, the composition. So I erased that with Photoshop and added uh, this flight of uh, uh, a flock of uh, geese, uh, flying uh, wild geese. I think it's poetic, is it? So I'm going to do this modified version. And I will enlarge the, work, the part I'm working on. Okay, so this, this is the tree part. I'm going to draw the tree. Uh, which one is the host? Uh, hard to say. Which one is Henry? I, Henry, I think the um, uncolored one is easier to see the details when you had up there before. Is there someone uh, commenting on that? I think that the template is easier to see um, than the colored uh, original. Easier to see than the original. Oh, okay. So you want to keep the template, okay. But I, I need to understand first that the, te the template could be misleading. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll shift back, but the template is just a placement. Um, I think, let me, let me do a tree first before I, uh, I need to make a nice, copy of this trunk. I try to follow the, um, um, you know, the, the mustard seed garden approach. So you should do the left one first, I think. And then the right one, and then you start to worry about uh, the thickness. You know, the second one usually uh, has to do with the right thickness of the tree. I, I will simplify this this uh, root. I think the, temp the, the template I sent you has simplified already. So I got too fat. I have to cheat a little bit from there. Henry. You can use leaf to cover it. Yes. Did you decide that that one is the host one? The <laughs> I think so. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I think it's in the front. Yeah, the front one. Like this one is very clear. This this one is a different picture. You can do this one too if you want. Um, right, let's do that. We, we, we have to redefine it. So I'm going to stay with my, uh, my copy here. All right. So um, there's some, like I, I mentioned, you know, the um, uh, continuity is important. So I have to decide this this branch is connected to this main branch, I think, on the original. That's why I go back to that. If you look at the original, you need to, you see this is continued, right? On my template is broken. See this, this continuity here? This is what I need to do. So I need to correct that. So don't copy my mistakes, folks. <laughs> you got it? Um, you can miss a few branches, it's okay, but don't make this kind of mistake that uh, yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. the branches 
if it's unmarked, then you have big trouble. No matter what you do, you know how close you you copy. So use your mind. Even you are tracing. You need to understand before you you copy. You can simplify things if we don't have time. You know you can do uh, less. But uh, okay. So yeah, there is some omission in between, but I, I use a dotted line. It doesn't matter. Um, if you just make a continued line in the beginning, it's more it's better than mismatched. You understand? It, it, you know, just forget about the the front leaves. So I will do leaves immediately. So the, you know, when I do the second tree, it's behind. It's behind. So I start from the top. I do this uh, four stroke thing. I try to do it as fast as I can. Maybe I don't have time to finish. I, I have feel that. So I do uh, maybe larger. That that's okay. I think we don't have time like the ancient people. They don't. They don't uh, have clock. <laughs> the sense of. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, uh, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You know, if you miss some, that's okay, as long as the space are equal, the size of leaflets equal. Um, you can insert a few leaves if you, you know, missed some. It's okay, you add, add extra leaf, it's okay. Everything is okay, as long as you know what's the idea. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, uh, shading uh, those, uh, you know, uh, in yang at all, just the uh, dense and sparse, not dense, uh, many and less, uh, what do you mean? The, the shape, the outer shape of the, the leaf, flower. Of, uh, okay, you can overlap some. Another experience I, I learned is that the first and the fourth leaf should be more horizontal than you think. So it's, it makes the, the uh, combination easier. If you paint all the four leaflets downward, it's difficult to combine them. Don't you think so? It's okay that the, my, my line gets gradually lighter and the thinner. Um, it's, I, yeah, anything, if it happens naturally over a course uh, of a, um, net, you know, time, it's natural, then you purposely try to control um, this kind of subtle uh, gradation or you know, variation. So I cannot really teach you how to make it uh, look like a, there's a rhythm or, or there's a, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, rhythmic res resonance, right? It happens if you just follow the natural way of uh, doing it, just follow a sequence uh, or direction as it would change. See this brush, you can use the small whistle brush to draw it, but uh, every group you have to reload maybe, or every couple. I don't have to reload this thing until I finish the whole tree because of I 
because of this brush is quite big. You can use this, um, a, a similar size, a stiff hair brush, any brush you could do this actually. You don't have to buy this brush, but uh, uh, I tried to make this um, for you know, easier for this purpose. But there are some uh, Spanish moss kind of thing, or lichens. You can add this kind of thing later. Um, Henry? Yes. A good brush is the, uh, the leaf uh, brush or red feather. Is it the red, red, red leaf? It's red, yeah, red hair brush, yeah. Now those are real good because they hold. Or seven wolf, bit. seven wolf is uh, okay. The liner, any gombi liner would do. It's a gombi painting, basically. It's yeah. Gombi painting. So you don't have to. Uh, this this brush actually is a little too big for you, maybe. If you. I use this for dotting the mass, it's called mass dots. I, you know, whenever I got new brush, I, it's like a new date. <laughs> I, I'm curious to to make a friend with, uh, with it, getting to know it. It's always uh, inspiring to, to use a new brush. So um, you cannot really see my painting. I can I cannot lift it because it's under the. Um, I have to keep it in place. You will see after the class. But you know what I'm doing, right? From the previous studies, you know the same rule uh, we talked about. So I just developed these uh, leaves along the. Uh, uh, horizontal line, but vary the number of each row. And you can borrow, you can uh, share uh, some leaflets uh, close together to, to overlap, but not over, uh, what do you call that? Co not covering each other. They overlap, but not covering each other, okay. So it looks very, very good now. Let me see. So there. Um, so for those of you who want to see the content template, you can open another window maybe on your computer. So you don't have to look at me because you, you cannot really see my hand. Uh, but you, you want to follow my steps. Uh, I, you know, I, as I mentioned in, in the beginning, this order is important. So branches, uh, I mean the um, trunk, trunk, branch, foliage of one tree, then the next tree. You don't want to do all the trunks at this time yet. Just like a watercolor, if you wash the sky first, you have a reason of doing that, right? But we do the sky, the sky. <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. If you don't follow that, you will have trouble. Same thing in, in all your painting, maybe. You do the darks first. So every, every journey, uh, every kind of art has their own principle and the, um, you might call this the rule or you know help uh, study rules. Let me mute everybody so we don't hear the sound. Okay, I'm going to, you, you don't have to finish 100%, but uh, just the, the area we will have overlapping. I think that's important to, so I do have to, to make sure the, the outer shape of this host is complete. 
before I do the next one, I want to make sure it looks good by itself. Okay. And now I'm going to do the second one. And there's a third one hidden there, I think. If not, I'm going to add it. So I would light the ink a little bit with the water. Maybe not so much difference, but uh, it might sh uh, show afterwards. Okay, I will draw this second one. Um, let me enlarge it. Oops. Okay, here we go. I I I will not worry about this uh, little. There's a lot of details on the on the root. Uh, so this is the second one. So we're going to omit the details. So this is where I start. Usually the intersection of the branches. You can start from the main. The first, uh, you know, just just do the the left. Have frequent passes, uh, and then the the southern school. Uh, Southern Sun School make a good bone strokes, not split brush. You know, I see some of you doing the branches with a sp uh, split brush that looks uh, very contemporary. So they're hidden with hidden uh, tip. Can't wait. I mean, can't stop myself from copying. So that's, uh, I have to probably cover it with a rock. All right. So another. I think this is the main trunk. Yeah, this is the main trunk. It's getting. This should be a little thinner than the host, but at least the same, not thicker than the host. And this continues to the top. Okay. And I see the other branch on top, very top is this belongs to the third, third tree. Okay, now there's a branch there. Goes it's very important to capture the gesture and the spirit, the characteristic, the character of the tree, just like uh, you draw a portrait of someone. You know, that's very, very important. So the loose branches belongs to the the other one, I cannot even identify what, oh yeah, it's just the same kind of a pattern, but uh, or we make it around it. Oh, maybe if we don't have time, we can just dot it. Um, you see, I think it's it's nicer to, to outline it, still not using dots. Okay, let's do. Continuation to this side. Doesn't matter. Let me let me use my template. Okay. 
So I used the uh, triangle. Maybe triangle is easier than round for you. So we'll just do triangles. Okay, triangles. Uh, remember, I talked about uh, how to um, make it uh, aligned. Okay. It's kind of hard to keep in one. I sometimes do the horizontal first. You, I think it's it's okay, but uh, don't emphasize on that. The horizontal stroke should be less important than the uh, the check. But sometimes, you know, when you do this uh, distant ones, you do the horizontal first, and then. That's a shortcut, actually. What about this? I do all the checks and then horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. Yeah, that, that looks good. You know, you, you start to create your own uh, habit to sometimes. It's a craft. As long as you can create equal, uh, neat arrangement. Originally, when I teach this class, I thought the pattern is uh, like a three. Um, and that works for me for a while until I read something in, in the um, other teaching books and they, they followed this uh, Qing dynasty prince Puyi's method. I think uh, because his uh, royal family, he had maybe inherited some uh, very old uh, traditions. So he, he does the arrangement in rows or columns instead of uh, the three, um, what do you call this? Uh, three groups, groupings. When you do uh, like a little ball extended, you know, from the main branch, that will help to just do three or five uh, in a in a in the character pin. Character pin like three miles. You know that kind of. Sometimes I I find it's easier just do the horizontal. So whichever it works for you, you know, you just fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. Sometimes you want it more defined, um, so you make it uh, more distinct. And some just like uh, what's in the picture is still there, but you know, but don't lose. Patient, when you, when you, when you start doing dots or something different than outline, then that's the problem. You can have some incomplete. I'm doing some like a dry brush thing, you know. Although it's not, it's not encouraged to, to create this kind of shadow uh, or light effect, but. I feel this is in the light, so I make it lighter by using drier brush. This is in the shadow. That's perfectly okay. Let me show you something I did with uh, my watercolor. <clears throat> okay, this painting I did the other day, this week, or, uh, last week, uh, in the watercolor class on Asp Aspen painting. So you can see, I how I did this. Actually, I washed the color first, and then I decided to, to go on with this pattern. Um, and I, I didn't really draw everything, but they think I, they couldn't believe I did it in, in half an hour or one hour, you know, in the class. Um, Henry? Yeah. Can you zoom in a little bit on what you're working on? Since the strokes, no, not that the, on the uh, template. Oh, um, my camera. I haven't figured out. I tried to figure this out. The the, the camera's drive does not um, allow it won't me. Do it. Yeah, so I can only uh, lift this paper. Ah, uh, no. So it, because the template. Uh, 
Okay, I think uh, it's basically just keep it even, and then uh -huh. when I get to the to the outer outer shape, you know, I I'll be more careful to create an uneven uneven shape. Oh, okay. Yeah. So as long as your inner part, just make you can make it columns. Or uh, if the rows works for you, you can make rows. But uh, I try to make it uh, not identifiable, <laughs> so you don't really see my my underlying. Um, yeah. It's just it's so tiny. Sometimes it's hard to see what you're doing. I know. Um, I don't really use my my my. You see, my head is. I can take my glass off and just do it with my mind. Uh huh. Uh, you know, that's, that's, you have to make uh, your hand with muscle memory. So your hand doing it, your mind doing it. Don't use your, uh, this is very important for your, for your health. Don't, you know, if you do that, uh, I better, you know, ask, uh, advice is stay away from gombi. If you're using your eye, you, you cannot do gombi. Gombi is like uh, you make a, uh, you know, someone write calligraphy, miniature calligraphy on a, on a rice, carve a whole town poem on a rice. Uh -huh. they, they said <laughs> when they carve, they don't really use their, their, uh, their eyes rather than their mind and hand co co coordination. So you, you, your, your, your eye may give you a rough idea is the you know, I control the brush. I, I hold the brush on the table, and uh, the height is fixed, right? So I right. and the size is. I kind of after practice, I know the the. Uh, it's just like a. Yeah, you don't have to really see it. Just a check and a dash, check and dash, like a you know, like those. And then do it in a row, in a column. And vary the, the numbers, you know, occasionally uh, when it goes to the to the margin. And sometimes I cheat a lot. I just I just draw some lines, you know, in the same kind of width and then length. And then I just define it with a little I then it's maybe three or five identifiable among 10, that it makes you think it's all, you know, triangles, right? So I can do all the checks and then I just put in some uh, dashes. So you can, you'll find your own way doing this, I'm sure. So you don't have to really stare at it. You have to um, learn how to use your eye correctly so your eye is nourished with beautiful painting and uh, uh, sceneries. You don't stare at it, so soon you will lose your sight. We use, we use the term um, gongyang nourishing uh, with uh, mist and the smoke, uh, mist is smoke, and clouds, yeah, mist and clouds, yin yun gong yang. To, so the painting is called the mist and the clouds, right? It's to nourish uh, our eyes, not to hurt our eyes. You understand what I mean? So even I show you the detail, I don't even know when I paint. So that's why, you know, when when connoisseurs look at the details and, oh, this stroke is wrong, this is a masterpiece, you can easily tell. If it's careless, natural way, it's, it's so um, masterful. You know, if you try to copy, you can see it's so stiff, no matter how well it, you copy. So calligraphy is the idea. You, 
you know how to write the triangle? You know how to write the check mark and the dash? Right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how that's how important it is. Yeah. I'm that, glad you're I'm glad you're saying this because this is good for us to know, you know, all of us. Yeah. So <laughs> you that's why it's a it's a that's the difference. You you're doing this in a fractal design way, which means you you don't copy bit by bit, um, section by section. You you write the the, the frac fractal element. Fractal means uh, uh, a part. A fractal fragmental frac fractal means uh, yeah the the, the uh, building unit of the pattern. Instead of record um, each each pixel, you know what I mean. Oh, I need to um, make sure this this uh, branch on top belongs to the one behind. So I'm going to add some more. You know, without uh, uh, dilute the ink, here's the, the shortcut. You can use a piece of paper, blotting paper, and you know, like a pra my practice paper. <laughs> I just use the same ink. And before it gets dry, I, I blot it. It will make it lighter. Understand? So this this tree uh, I'm doing this here. Um, I can do the rock maybe. Let's see that. I think I, I hide it. I have to move it a little bit. Okay. Shouldn't be much uh, much there. So just a hint of it. And the, 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 uh, Hidden the better. I mean, I mean, it's it's uh, overlapping um, behind, you know, and this one turns to the left to the right. So two main trees tends to left more or less. This one kind of shift the, um, the the gravity to the to the right. So this one, I, I try to concentrate on the outer shape first, because that's more pr uh, important in composition. As long as I have the, the outer shape right, I'm fine. So it's a little zigzag kind of. OK, so this one, I'm going to use what left? We have triangle, we have this forced leaflets. So I only have the round dots. Uh, you can use round, round. Um, okay, let's just do the round. So we have all four, uh, three. Um, you can do it in two strokes, if that's easier for you. I think it is. Okay, I just draw very tiny, because this is in the back. So about the same size as the triangular shape, but it's rounded. Remember the flower? Uh, just you know, develop this uh, the first set, and then you just go <laughs> from the center out, from the center of the pattern. I think it's easier to do two two strokes and leave some opening, so it's more suggestive, not uh, so tight. Because we need to some some uh, yeah it's it's a little loose uh, the original it, it, it's more space because uh, this is important I think it's kind of hard so I uh, I try to avoid this flower pattern we just do the three or five uh, group like a triangular shape or irregular shape, you know, that kind of, still, it's, you have to make sure it's close together, so it's like a blossom. Okay. All right. Yeah, you probably have to spend, um, yeah, more than half on this trees, then you will, will, will be 
Let's see. Let me see. Okay, let me see what next. The rock, right? What's behind the tree there? Black? I don't understand. I can look at the original picture here. Um, it's just a just a block of dark ink. Uh -huh. that's, that's something. Let me just uh, extend it a little bit. Make sure it is nice shaped. And there's some uh, branches suggesting the tree outside. Okay, don't worry about that. I'm going to outline this uh, rock so using dark ink again and uh, starting from this, this main tree. Dry brush, dry brush is better. Not split brush though. This is X cut and so we do the contour first. Uh, divide this the space. Um, you need to make sure you understand the dimensions of that. So this one goes behind. Oops. Okay. Let me see. Oh, I got it wrong. This is weird. Okay. So this is behind this one. It's so detailed within this little space. It has a lot of details. So we have to make it uh, relatively easier. So you can start to do some dry brushing, um, shaping or shading. You know, just X cut, go up also. Uh, I shape on one side of the contour only. And uh, some leaf, I mean, uh, root, holes, and then we can darken the holes, create a shadow. Okay, this part, I'll just blacken it. I don't have to. It's just like a um, ink wash. There's no. I, I'm sure it should have the structure. Otherwise, uh, you know, have bones in it. It should be darker on top. So the dark it should be. And uh, use a, let me use a clean brush to pull the ink to the margin. Two brushes, yeah, clean. Yin yang alternate to squeeze out each other. Dry brush. Not copy stroke by stroke. Okay, now um, I'm going to do the, the background here. We got this line. There should be some line on the trunk there. Oh, I see. Maybe that's a line. I'm not sure. So this should be. That's why this is thick on the other side. So maybe it's overlapping vine on the inner side of the tree. So you don't have to make a telephone wire or something. Okay, I'm going to use uh, 
a soft brush with water, dampen it and then clean, ready to pour it. Um, so there's a boat in, in front of the riverbank. Don't worry about that. I think we add the boat later. Okay, so just outline the uh, river, the medium, medium dark, medium dark ink. Um, notice that the dark is on the uh, in, in on the inner part, so you don't have you don't want to dark in the um, near the edge. So it's kind of tricky. Usually I draw like that. You can draw a thin line to find and then press down a little bit more to get a thicker. This is called fish head. Remember, we learned this. We learned this uh, fish head stroke. Uh, try to make it simple. Just the fish head, and then couple little rocks. This is so delicate. You even have a large and a small. Always vary the size. And then there's a river bank there, and there's a uh, protruding part some some kind of like that. But you know, just don't draw a, a curved line without this horizontal um, horizontal cliff, I say. Okay, that's uh, horizontal, keep it horizontal, otherwise it will become standing. It goes behind the tree there, and there is a little island, and there was a, always a, a one large, one small huh? rock. I, I'm not sure if there's outline, but I just do it in bonus style. No, 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 no outline. And uh, there's a curved line there, and uh, just like that, there's a little rock. And uh, just loosely draw the bank. Okay, ready to wash. And I'll use little um, dark ink along the lower side of the bank and then push it with a clean brush. This is a typical gonna be separate wash. You know, they hold the brush like that, just like like that. And there should be no extra water on on the paper when you finish the section. Okay, my phone is running. I don't want to answer that. This little peninsula. And just to push back into mist. And you can wet, you can wet the mist area first, like this. Okay, wet the mist area first, and then you use a, a light ink to. Draw this slope and then push it into the wet easily. You got a gradation kind of mist. Uh, and here also it disappears in the in the in the mist. So you want to charge and then drag push a spread the ink with clean dampened brush. This is a basic uh, uh, technique. This brush should not be too wet. It should not be too wet. It's like a sponge. It takes away the excessive water while you, you uh, spread 
spread the ink. Okay, and uh, here's another section. Let me just draw this. You have to do it right away before you um, before it gets dry. So that's why the brush is held in one hand. The brushes are held in one hand when you do this. I just put the ink in the in the lower part of the that cliff and just push it. Occasionally you have to clean this brush, make it make it clean and then squeeze out the you can use a paper towel, keep it keep it damp, but uh, not too wet, okay? And uh, this distant, I would use the wet into wet technique again. I, I wet the area beyond first. Oh, I got ink in it. Just a little ink, it's okay. Clean water. And then um, very light, almost clear ink. And dry brush dampen by dry brush to control the effect. You don't have to, you know, really repeat, repeat, repeat. If you do it uh, um, spontaneously, we call this a spontaneous uh, uh, gombi, right? It could have the same enjoyment like a gombi, uh, like a spontaneous painting. It, but you just do it a more controlled way, not like a, uh, if you do an unsized paper, you have to double load the brush and one stroke. That's too challenging for most people. Uh, so that's why we we suggest you use this uh, unsized paper, so you can have more control. It's more uh, like a watercolor painting. Uh, okay, uh, what's the time? Okay, we have 10, uh, we have uh, about 15 minutes, all right? We are on target. I have to do this vegetation. Okay, so let's finish this. Uh, uh, ideally, yeah, we, we can, we should have done this uh, tree first, but uh, let, me, let me just reverse the order a little bit. Uh, we can still, do, I think the, the Southern Zone Dynasty Masters did this. They, they add the vegetation after the wash, all right, yeah. Okay, so next I'm going to wash the mist uh, under this cliff with a, a clean brush. I'll save some space here for the trees. I don't have to wait too long. And I have, yeah, this is the most distant tree there. I have to wet that. Okay, so I dampened the whole area with the, should be clean water. See, my ink is overnight, so it's kind of bleeding. That's not very good. Um, you should use the grind ink, it's bleeding. Be careful with that. I use larger brush. So we, we use a softer brush. This is just basic uh, soft. Oh, actually, this is a cotton brush. It's a combination brush. Combination brush. And the soft, basic soft brush will do. It holds a lot of water. Um, this one is uh, behind. So let's add a little bit of indigo to it. I could have used the. Uh, situated it's, um, it's not going to bleed too much actually it doesn't matter on this size paper I just resituate the overnight ink with a little indigo it adds some distance to it 
Okay, so just one stroke. Um, I think last time I showed you how to do this. Um, just add some water down there and uh, start from the darkest part. Okay. Let's just see if I can do it in one move. Just start from this peak. You know, this is a size paper, so, so watch. You can go slow. You don't have to hurry. And, uh, but I want to do it continuously without reloading. And just add a little dark. This is the focal point. And use a clean brush to take extra moisture away and then um, spread it a little bit. That's how easy it is. I got some a little smearing, that's okay. It's a little tree there, I think. No, don't don't force anything, just let it be the way it, it you will get masterpiece if you do this. Uh, instead of controlling everything, try to control everything. Just try to follow this. Uh, okay, here is again, I, I dampened the lower part of this eyebrows. I call this eyebrows mountain. Xia Gui, you know, the Xia, Xia Gui mountain. And then I use this ink brush to just, just like just like spontaneous painting. Dampen, dampen dry brush to control the effect. You know, you can, you can make it up. It's not done in one stroke. However, I can try if it works. I will add a little vegetation and the building, uh, the temple there. And uh, finally, I will do the distant mountain with a little indigo and ink, you know, indigo and uh, maybe umber to mute it a little bit. It's not too blue, it's, a, it's a warm blue, a uh, warm gray, maybe. No, it's not so blue, but yeah, there's a lot of, and this one is a needle, needle uh, kind of, with a little rock on the left. You can just do it one stroke. <clears throat> do I need to take anything away? I can still do that, you know, if I need just to use a, a dry, dampen brush like a sponge, you can control the effect. You can add the accent on top if you like. It. Okay, I don't. To, um, okay, here is the, the uh, time. We have five minutes. Um, yeah, we need to wash the the, the uh, rock. Uh, just uh, use the uh, indigo and ink. You can do the ink and the indigo separately, but to save time, I just use the same. Indigo and ink. And then you can add a little um, indigo. Okay, I go out like the out. And uh, some indigo. Indigo and ink for this uh, giant black. I don't know what's in there. It looks like a, just a, like a background. Uh, 
onto a tree or a rock or whatever. Squeeze out the shape of the tree on top. And you can add a little to the shady part of this uh, rock. Okay. And you can block it if, uh, if it's too dark now. Oops. That extra. Oh. That's why you need uh, a brush rest. It just ruined my watercolor. Got extra dots there. Okay, here I got extra spots. Oh, I, that's actually a, could be a hue. I didn't see that, but as long as as long as I see this this accident, I see there's a <laughs> hidden hue there. You know, the painting just uh, sometimes just take the lead. Uh, this you can wash first, then you can uh, do the distant dot later. This is distant jungle here. And just put some uh, blue in the distant. I'm using single brush. It's okay. Just you know, wash the color. Okay, now I, I will do the, the tree with the, um, so first of all, I, I wash the, the, I think it's kind of brown for the trunk. You can make it, uh, you can leave some white on this main one. Just uh, to the shady part. Okay, what color would be the, the um, um, I've got this uh, vermilion here. You can use a little yellow, maybe. But for this main tree, I just use the vermilion. And uh, you can mute it a little bit. I don't want it too vibrant. We always do something like a dawn, you know, like a sunset. You can um, you can apply it to on, on the back, you know, that will avoid co covering it. Should I do that? I think so. Let's take the template away so you can see it. Should I take a picture before I color it? I think um, it's a good idea. So you can see my black white version. Uh, yeah, if it's uh, the ink I use is overnight, which is um, not good for Gombi because it tends to bleed. To bleed, um, you should use fresh ink or best grind ink for Gombi. OK, 
to avoid that, I, I apply color on the back. This is maybe not traditional for the, uh, it is traditional to paint on the back, not maybe particular to this painting, but this is a, let's see if it works. It, yeah, this is the another thing because this paper is uh, sized, so th the intensity is another issue. And it will not uh, so intense. So I think the best way to do that is to use alum uh, to seal it, and then you use uh, uh, more paints. You can use uh, transparent paint instead of instead of this. Uh, Okay, so another way to do that is to avoid washing. You just dot it, just like a, you know you dot the the leaves. I think that that's the best way to do it. It's even more desirable. So you can leave a little highlight. You can, leave... Excuse me. Can you do both the wash in the back plus the dots yeah. or not? Sure, sure. <laughs> you can do it both. <clears throat> the the back just add a little bit. A little bit uh, tinge to it. Mm -hmm. Front uh, actually does it. So I can. Um, so there's no pure white on in this area. You know, even I leave a little bit white. It's not pure white. It has the the color in it. Um, yeah, dot it. I think that's a classic way. I can I can prove that. To give you another example. I found it's not in my folder. Uh, because I got too many <laughs> choices, uh, I lim eliminate that one. But uh, that one has to has uh, the dotted line, a uh, dotted leaf combined with a uh, outline, dotted color combined with ink uh, ink outline. It's beautiful because you can dot outside the leaf a little bit. I don't want to do that because uh, that create kind of. Uh, uh, Roughness, how to say. So I want to make sure it stays within first. If necessary, I can go out to add some, uh, like a background, you know, some back leaves. So I. I what, when you when you dot it, your paper is very dry. Yeah, it's almost dry. I. I okay. uh, almost, but okay. But still it's a little damp. On the other side, it's wet on the other side. Okay. Oh yeah. Size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the size. It's wet on the other side. Pure, it's uh -huh. pure water. But uh, yeah, on this side, it's wet. It's dry. So I'm safe. It's not going to create any trouble. So I I left a little highlight. You know, white. I may go in to glaze it with with some yellow, orange kind of thing, um, if I want to mute it. But you know, it's nice. You can keep it. So see, I, I, I mentioned I can dot outside the outline in this soft, you know, uh, crossing uh, overlapping area. So they, they kind of um, create some kind of softness there. Anyway, it's just some idea. To explore. Mm -hmm. And another thing I'm going to do is the yellow. I use yellow. And this time I just use the uh, transparent yellow, so you don't have to do it on the, on the other side. And I just, uh, you don't have to, I think because I outline it with a thinner stroke, so it's not going to bleed that much. I don't know for some reason. That one, I don't know. It, it tends to bleed. I saw that when I draw the background. So this one, I, I'm safe. I just do, I just, I leave a little white. Um, what color would be for the back? The round, rounded dots. These are too close. Maybe. So this is more yellowish, yellowish, like a, um, ochre type kind of color. I don't want to use lemon, but maybe I should use lemon for the for the distant one. You think that will work? It, it's lighter. Or you can use a little uh, green 
uh, let me see. Yeah, I think you can use green or contrast color like your indigo, that kind of thing. But uh, mm -hmm. let me let me use. Uh, we we'll just use lemon. I do have lemon yellow in my wrist, new color. You can use uh, uh, gamboge. Gamboge is already used. This is the traditional yellow chunk. I have the uh, yellow here, I think. Uh, Naples yellow. That's kind of opaque. Ah, le lemon. Beautiful. Okay, let's do the lemon. Okay, that's a cool yellow. And uh, it's transparent. I got some dirt in it, but it makes it green. You can leave a little white. Don't have to fill in every one of them. You know, just, uh, that's why we dot it. We don't do a solid wash. And you can put some in, in uh, there. It's, it's you know like a behind behind the, the, the these two trees kind of overlapping. Um, you can mix lemon with uh, with this. Just add a little yellow to this white leaves. So it will make it more. Uh, important too because it has more color in it. I I still like some white yes, for some reason. At least for now, I don't want to elim eliminate the other the white. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me um, see what time we already passed the time. Okay, so maybe um, it's time to do the the bird. This is still wet, or you know the dot of the trees. Let me use my new brush just to finish the tree here. I think it's dry. It's good. So I'm going to do the tree. The, the little ground tree, um, it's the same kind of tree, but simplified into just the four branches. You know, no matter how small, it's still four branches. You can do a smaller one even behind that. And then just dot the tree with triangular shape. Or you can still um, draw some triangulars, you know, just the, like uh, little, little lines. As I mentioned, I just draw this uh, a dash with the three. I cannot really see what I'm doing. Okay. So just uh, that's for the middle ground. The, uh, one dash with the three triangles. And then uh, just uh, some uh, indigo dust, and then you dot the tree directly in the dampened area of this mist, uh, kind of uh, um, communicate with the, this area. So this uh, do not separate. So they belong to the same kind of tree category. And you can you can directly dot some behind with the same kind of. Uh, you don't have to draw all the branches. In it, I think. So this one is behind, and this is suggested. It goes up a little bit there. Okay, I think that's about it. And after it dries, you can still add a little. Um, soft, maybe. And I start to do a little um, mustards. This is mustards time, right? So you can you can dot the dots on the uh, on the mountain here. I will omit that uh, temple because uh, it 
may change my subject matter into uh, the uh, the other view of uh, Xiaoxiang, you know, the temple, the bear buried in the dawn time. That, that's a different poem. So I'm doing this, uh, um, this uh, geese. I think many of you have done this last time. Uh, remember that uh, the geese wing are not so curved. If you curve it too much, it looks like child child painting. And it's very long because the geese has a large tail. Um, pay more attention on the uh, alignment. Uh, I, I want to make sure it overlap with the line, one of them, please, and then a crossing. Uh, would that be more poetic just like that without going all the way to the sky? It's like climbing. I agree, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just make it a little perspective. Okay. Barely over the mountain, yeah. Over the mountain. Oh, beautiful. I like that. Less is more, right? Okay. Could, so. could, could you please um, do a bird closer up at some point today? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Let me just pull this a little bit before it gets too late. But it, 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 it makes it into a jungle. I'll fill in some uh, right there. Okay, I have some uh, request uh, last time um, about the uh, folding fan. Do you still have the question? If there's somebody asked you that, uh, I ask you to remind me also. So uh, if you if you still have problem, let me show it again. I, I'm sorry about my dirty hand. Um, Okay, you fold the paper into half like so. And then um, remember the middle of the, the fan. You keep that in mind. Make a diagonal fold like this. And then, oops, I got some dirt. like that and keep folding it. Okay, and then you cut, uh, cut the bottom off, cut the top off. And cut the, the margin off. I don't have scissors in hand, just the show you. So I don't know what what uh, was the problem uh, you, you had, but uh, this is how easy it is, okay, to make a folding fan. And for the birds, um, you can, let me just do it here, let me put this on top of uh, something. Even this is uh, size the paper, it might just so I, I have a stroke going down like a teardrop. Remember teardrop stroke? Teardrop stroke means that you, you press gradually like a teardrop, okay? It's a very classical, classical calligraphy stroke. Without lifting, you start doing a nail head stroke. Nail head stroke start heavier and then gradually lift, lift, lift. This is called a nail head stroke. So if you combine the two, teardrop, nail head, but you know you can curve a little bit. Not not. A, I I think it's straight is is better than curved. Uh, what you do do not want to do is this. 
or you want to do this, you know, no matter what you do with the curved line, it make it childish. Don't don't do this. The the correct way is uh, uh, then you 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 worry uh, you vary the the direction a little bit. So this 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 could go up. Uh, this could go down. You know, but uh, you can also vary the the lens so it look like a in a in a foreshortened view or something. Uh, you can add in this you know you can add the the body you know sometimes they do this in if it's the front one, but don't um, don't add this to every one of them. In the the distant one could be just uh, like that, or even just a dash. So more detail to the front. No, uh, more detail yeah, to the to the front. Okay, so just remember the teardrop, and then uh, nail head combined, the teardrop, nail head. Thank you. That helps a lot. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. See how how our fan goes here. Oh, I like it. Look at this painting. Beautiful. Effortlessly. I need to wash. Uh, let me wash my hand first. <laughs> yes, I think you should. <laughs> I may have to quit at three if he doesn't. Well, that's our, our class lasts till three. That's why I told Kathy, 3.30. OK. Thanks for waiting. Um, OK, some final detail. Uh, so this part should be still um, considered as a, a maples, right? So we can add a little yellow, maybe a little bit uh, red, just to, to uh, echo the right, you know, just the, uh, you can have a little red, red, I think. So it got everything blue and the, you can have some blue behind, the blue and the red and the yellow out there. Mm. This this should be blue, right? Mm -hmm. okay. What about this water? It should be left. Mm -hmm. um, let me mute, mute you guys. Okay. Um, should we should we do the boat? I think it, we can make the boat into a poet's boat instead of a fishing boat. Okay, let's do that. Um, oh, I didn't leave enough room for the figure. Where is the two? Okay. There is a, there's a figure there. Is a, whatever it is, just a boat. Okay. And that's darkest part in the picture. I have to add that because otherwise there's no dark. Uh, I can add a little accent uh, on the on the rock, but it's not um, necessary because in southern zone they don't do much mass dust. Although I do. Love to use this mustard brush. Um, yeah. Besides the the poet, um, the title poet poet po po poem, we can wash just a touch of the sky with the. Uh, I want a little bit uh, um, this color, this this uh, orange color, maybe just a touch of it. Um, it should be near the horizon, I, I think. 
And I want to highlight the birds area. So it's kind of hard to decide what to do. If you don't know what to do, just leave it out, maybe. I may ruin it. Let's just keep it uh, simple um, without adding that. Okay, I I um, remembered a line, uh, two lines from uh, a poem in uh, Professor James uh, Cahill's lecture, and I changed one word to suit this picture. I'll write here. Um, oh, this I just realized this branch has no leaves on it, but I kind of like it. You like it? It has no leaves on it. <clears throat> Mountain uh, enclosed autumn colors near. Geese traversing um, evening light slowly. Slowly. Okay, I don't know how to write the complicated stretches, but it's okay. <clears throat> so, um, mountain includes uh, autumn leaves, autumn colors, clothes, and uh, geese traversing uh, in evening light late. Uh, I should have done something here. So I can sign on the other side. Maybe instead of uh, continue on this, it will make it uh, so we can sign here. I just put a short signature. And the seal. Okay, that's that's it. Well, thank you for all your patience over, over time, but I hope you enjoyed this class as much as uh, I did. Any questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Could you show the, uh, the the book again that you mentioned at the beginning, the the art of uh, Chinese painting? The Chinese on the art of Chinese painting. Yeah. The, I, I, I put a link in the comment the area. On, oh, yeah. you did. The Chinese on the art of painting. Uh, there's a link. Chinese. Uh, there's a link on uh, Amazon you can get. I, I, let me copy it here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and I, ha I have another question. Uh, I see that in, on your website that you have a, a, a black ink for seals. Do they, is it commonly used or is it? Oh, yeah, no, it's not commonly used, but uh, I see some, some people use that uh, with a, their signature kind of, uh, mm -hmm. they, they put their Chinese name on, on the uh, seal. They can use it as a handwriting. It's not very common. Okay. Yeah, you can, um, I think the red is more common, but just for some, we have all kinds of uh, colors, including purple, you know, uh -huh. seal, but I, I like it. I never like, use yeah. them, but you, you can use that if you have a seal that you want it black, maybe on photography or something they use, I don't know how people use it, but uh, we do have mm -hmm. 
the black yeah same as the uh, uh, the red but a different color. Henry, can I ask something? Yes. Um, with the with the we. I think we established that there are three trees in this composition, but but can we see the trunk of the third tree, or is that the third one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The third one. Yeah, the third one is here. I, I try to enhance it so you can see. It's starting from here. That's the root. So it's, it's okay, very right. hidden. I can I can put a little. So that's what I'm doing. I think we we should have some traces. But this one is that. Um, but if you send us a photo um, of your of your of your copy, um, let me see. Uh, the, the photo has uh, three trees. No, I, I added. Uh, I added it uh, with a pencil jot. I didn't use the marker, but it, it is there. Let me show you where it is. So this line here is the third tree. I think the root, the root should be here. If you look at the, uh, if you look carefully, the original has this, this root. It's very hidden. Um, I can make it a darker, maybe, just to make this darker. Would that help? Maybe just one side darker, you can see it okay. now? Yeah. yeah, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, let's just make it dark. Don't have to be light. Okay, I, I, I made it to more distinct. Okay, and uh, very beautiful. Thank you, thank you for your comment. Uh -huh. So you can yeah add a little bark. I think I don't want to add anything. Yeah, the only thing I wasn't sure is if I should wash the the, the sky in. Uh -huh. But if you use the antique uh, paper, it should be. Um, should be okay. But if I do that, then I, I have to wash the, the river, everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the same. No, no, I think it's nice like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just use tea, maybe make it old. <laughs> use tea. <laughs> Try tea, tea, uh, tea water wash. Yeah. So you can go back to re, uh, awakening things, like uh, you can add uh, some uh, some leaves in the fading if it's faded you, know, you can make a you can reawakening this is a, called reawakening just because the opaque color may cover the ink I mean uh, yeah the ink outline and you can reinstate uh -huh. it that's uh, what you could do at this point um, but uh, yeah as a quick demo I'm very satisfied. And I will show you a clean picture after the class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Really, really great lesson. Being late, uh, Yoki, are you still there? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. This was wonderful today. Thank, Thank you. you, Henry. Bye bye. Bye, bye. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's really very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Bye bye. <laughs> Stop recording.